Wallace formulates a new law of nature. It's about where new species arise. Good morning everyone, how you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today we've come to find the final resting place of Alfred Russell Wallace. And if you don't know who he is, I will tell you about him real soon. It's absolutely, well it's not chucking it down, but it's raining enough for me to have a brolly out and I've got quite a few bits to do today, so I do not want to get soaking wet. I know usually you see me standing here getting absolutely drenched, which I don't mind, I quite enjoy that. But I've got uh, other filming to do, and I'm just not in the mood to get soaked, to be honest with you today. It's just one of those days. You know, from time to time, a man is allowed to give himself a brolly and walk around a cemetery with it. Because that's just normal and happens every day anyway, isn't it? Anyway, Alfred Russell Wallace, he is the man. He formulated the theory of evolution by natural selection independently of Charles Darwin. Now try saying that on a cold Thursday morning. Okay, so that's what he's all about. And I've seen a picture of his final resting place and oh my God, you will not be disappointed. It is very unusual. I saw it and I thought, well, A, he's part of a big part of history, uh, of course, being associated with Charles Darwin and uh, evolution, of course. And not only that, he, um, he had a really unusual grave. And I thought, yeah, I'm in the pool area today and I thought, I'm going to go and film here it's at Broadstone Cemetery. It's a small little cemetery, okay? I'm just trying to cover the mic up because last time the mic got soaked. Um, well, not the mic, but the bit on top of the camera there, the receiver. Um, it just stopped working. So I'm trying to make sure that that's covered up. Um, yeah, it's a lovely little cemetery, not very big. Um, I'll tell you about him real soon. If you like the video today, please hit the uh, thumbs up button. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. It does not cost you a penny. It's just the wording subscribe. I know I go on about it, but so many people still say to me, I don't want to pay to watch. You don't have to pay to watch. It's still free to watch. Even if you subscribe, it's still free. It doesn't cost you a penny, okay? It just means you like what I do. Um, and then if you hit the notification bell, that will notify you when new videos come out. It looks like, have we got clear skies? It looks like we've got some clear skies, so we can lose that rubbish. Oh, who needs a brolly? Um, <laughs> and I will tell you now about Alfred Russell Wallace. Once, of course, I put my brolly away. You watch, I'll put it away and I'll get absolutely drenched. Uh, let's just tell you a bit about him right now. And I'll give you a little tour of the cemetery. Alfred Russell Wallace, OMFRS, 8th of January 1823 to the 7th of November 1913, was an English naturalist, explorer, geographer, anthropologist, biologist and illustrator. He independently conceived the theory of evolution nat through natural selection. His 1858 paper on the subject was published that year alongside extracts from Charles Darwin's earlier writings on the topic. It spurred Darwin to set aside the big species book he had been drafting and quickly write an abstract of it, which was published in 1859 as On the Origin of Species. Wallace did extensive fieldwork starting in the Amazon River Basin. He then did fieldwork in the Malay Archipelago, where he identified the final divide, now termed the Wallace Line, which separates the Indonesian archipelago into two distinct parts, a western portion in which the animals are largely of Asian origin and an eastern portion where the fauna reflect Australasia. He was considered the 19th century's leading expert on the geographical distribution of animal species and is sometimes called the father of biogeography or more specifically zoography. Wallace was one of the leading evolutionary thinkers of the 19th century, working on warning correlation in animals and reinforcement, sometimes known as the Wallace effect, a way that natural selection could contribute to specification by encouraging the development of barriers against hybridization. Wallace's 1904 book, Man's Place in the Universe, was the first serious attempt by a biologist to evaluate the likelihood of life on other planets. 
He was one of the first scientists to write a serious exploration of whether there was life on Mars. Aside from scientific work, he was a social activist, critical of what he considered to be an unjust social and economic system in the 19th century Britain. His advocacy of spiritualism and his belief in a non-material origin for the higher mental faculties of humans strained his relationship with other scientists. He was one of the first prominent scientists to raise concerns over the environmental impact of human activity. He wrote prolifically on both scientific and social issues. His account of his adventures and observations during his explorations in Southeast Asia, the Malay Archipelago, was the first published in 1869. It continues to be both popular and highly regarded. Alfred Russell Wallace was born on the 8th of January 1823 in Monmouthshire. He was the eighth of nine children born to Mary Ann Wallace and Thomas Vere Wallace. His mother was English, whilst his father was of Scottish ancestry. His family claimed a connection to William Wallace, a leader of Scottish forces during the War of Scottish Independence in the 13th century. Wallace's father graduated in law but never practised it. He owned some income-generating property, but bad investments and failed business ventures resulted in a steady deterioration of the family's financial position. Wallace's mother, from a middle-class family in Hartford, to which place his family moved when Wallace was five years old. He attended Hartford Grammar School until 1837. When he reached the age of 14, the normal leaving age for a pupil not going to university, Wallace then moved to London to board with his older brother John, a 19-year-old apprentice builder. This was a stopgap measure until William, his eldest brother, was ready to take him on as an apprentice surveyor. While in London, Alfred attended lectures and read books at the London Mechanics Institute. Here he was exposed to the radical political ideas of the Welsh social reformer Robert Owen and the English-born political theorist Thomas Paine. He left London in 1837 to live with William and work as his apprentice for six years. They moved repeatedly to different places in mid Wales. Then at the end of 1839, they moved to Kington, Herefordshire, near the Welsh border, before eventually setting in Neath in Wales. Between 1840 and 1843, Wallace worked as a land surveyor in the countryside in the west of England and Wales. The natural history of his surroundings aroused his interest. From 1841, he collected flowers and plants as an amateur botanist. Inspired by the chronicles of earlier and contemporary travelling naturalists, Wallace decided to travel abroad. He later wrote that Darwin's journal and Humboldt's personal narrative were the two works to whose inspiration I owe my determination to visit the tropics as a collector. After reading A Voyage Up the River Amazon by William Henry Edwards, Wallace and Bates estimated that by collecting and selling natural history specimens such as birds and insects, they could meet their costs, with the prospects of good profits. They therefore engaged as their agent Samuel Stevens, who would advertise and arrange sales to the institutions and private collectors for a commission of 20% on sales plus 5% on dispatching freight and remittances of money. In 1848, Wallace and Bates left for Brazil aboard the Mischief. They intended to collect insects and other animal specimens in the Amazon rainforest for their private collections, selling the duplicates to museums and collectors back to Britain to fund the trip. Wallace hoped to gather evidence of the transmutation of species. Bates and he spent most of their first year collecting near Bellum. They explored inland separately, occasionally meeting to discuss their findings. In 1849, they were briefly joined by another young explorer, the botanist Richard Spruce, alongside with Wallace's younger brother, Herbert. Herbert soon left, dying two years later from yellow fever. But Spruce, like Bates, would spend over 10 years collecting in South America. Wallace spent four years charting the Rio Negro, collecting specimens and making notes of the people's languages he encountered, as well as the geography flora and fauna. On the 7th of November 1913, Wallace died at home aged 90 in the country house he called Old Orchard, which he had built a decade earlier. The New York Times called him the last of the giants. 
belonging to that wonderful group of intellectuals composed of Darwin, Huxley, Spencer, Lyell, Owen and other scientists, whose daring investigations revolutionised and evolutionised the thought of the century. Another commentator in the same edition said, No apology need be made for the few literary or scientific follies of the author of that great book on the Malay Archipelago. Some of Wallace's friends suggested that he be buried in Westminster Abbey, but his wife followed his wishes and had him buried in the small cemetery at Broadstone, Dorset. Several prominent British scientists formed a committee to have a medallion of Wallace's placed in the Westminster Abbey near where Darwin had been buried. The medallion was unveiled on the 1st of November 1915. Now there is so much more information on this great man's life and I suggest that you go and look him up on the internet and find out what you can regarding his great achievements because there would be too much here for me to read out on this short video. So there's all the information there about Alfred Russell Wallace and what a interesting life that man led you know and how far ahead of his time he was as well anyway i've been having a good look around and you really cannot miss this and you know what i think i found it i've definitely found it and you'll be like how could you miss it i haven't missed it let's have a look yeah it's just like a tree trunk okay and then we come down here's a beautiful plaque on here let's read the the older one first alfred russell wallace om born january the 8th 1823 died november the 7th 1913 and this i love this when i was doing my research on it and i found the picture i just thought it was so cool alfred russell wallace om lld dcl frs fls naturalist scientist explorer writer social campaigner, humanitarian, co-discoverer of the evolution of, by natural selection, founder of the science of zoo geography. This monument was restored in the year 2000 by the A.R. Wallace Memorial Fund. It is cared for by the Linyan Society of London. I think I've said Linyan correctly. But let's just have a little look around, shall we? And then on the side here, Annie Wallace, wife of A.R. Wallace, born February 12th, 1846, died December 10th, 1914. And then we come around this side. It's just amazing. It just really is. And then back round to here. Now, I don't know about you, but I just find things like this fascinating. I really do. And we've got to say a massive, massive thank you to Mr. Wallace uh, for what he did for the human race, if anything, you know, what, what, he's, what his work gave us. Um, thank you so much, Alfred. Bless you. Uh, wow. I love it. I really wish, let's bring the camera a little bit closer. I really wish that we had more, um, you know, people of a certain caliber in life, people that did things, you know. I wish they had a bit more about their final resting place where we can go and pay our respects, of course. And I know it's nice that they just have an unassuming headstone sometimes, which is, which is great, and that's fine, and obviously it's their choice or family's choice. But I think people that need to be recognized should be recognized a little bit more. Um, especially for people like Alfred Wallace there and what he did for us all. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if that, there's a little bit more of that about. It'd be pretty good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one today. I did, I thought it's, again, it's an unusual, unusual grave, isn't it? I know the channel's called Unusual Things, but it was an unusual grave. Um, yeah, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And, you know, Leave me your comments down below as always and 
all the usual stuff. And a massive thank you to any new viewers that we've got. I know lots of uh, more people have subscribed recently, which is great. Thank you very much. It's always good to have new viewers on board. Um, and if you haven't done so, go back and check. There's over 230 odd videos on the channel. Because um, I get messages all the time. Hey, Paul, have you done this one? Seriously, go and have a binge watch. You know, I don't know if I'm that entertaining, but the graves are and, you know, some of the places that I, I visit are. Um, but yeah, just seriously, go and have a little binge watch and um, catch up on some of the ones. And you may see one of your favourites there, someone that you've, um, you know, wanted to know about or wondered what happened to them. And you might, you know, stumble across their video on my channel. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and put my feet up. Yeah, like that's going to happen. Um, and uh, <laughs> on to the next one, you know me. And uh, thanks as always for watching. And I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy. My car's there. I've got to go this way. Bye.